We good? We are live. All right. Okay. Professor Spirit, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. I I was just informed today that, or yesterday, that uh, Brother Eric won't be able to be present with us today. But, right. Yeah. 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 But that's that's all right because I'm I'm pretty confident that if he wanted someone to speak on his behalf on certain topics, that you would be the person that he would recommend. Yeah. Yeah. Most most definitely. And uh, so yeah. So we're doing a like a like a simulcast broadcast. So we we're broadcasting live on the Professor Spira. Uh, mucus free life uh, youtube channel but we're this will also be made available on all of uh, uh johnny's uh network and then we'll have links to all of that and you can tell him you said you had a youtube channel and you got facebook and uh, and your personal trainer at a, at a big gym and 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 all of that good stuff and so uh so yeah we will you know just just get get this information out to as many people as we can yeah, definitely. And that that was that was one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to speak with you guys was because of the fact that the message that Arnold Eric provided to us over a hundred years ago has stood the test of time in taking people out of what Dr. Morse would call Hellville and bringing them to the other side of that fence. And in this process, it's a transition. It's not a dive right in and hope for the best. This is a transition system that Eric has taught and given to us. And for the ones that truly do read his work and put together the pieces that he was providing to us, you are going to get yourself in a position to heal. So with that being said, you have been a practitioner for how many years now? Man, it's been, uh, this is 16 years, I think. This is coming up because it was 15 years last year. So, yeah, we're, we're coming up on, on my 16th year of practicing the mucus dieting system. That, see, that's, that's amazing right there. When you, when you really think about the fact that this information is still fairly new, this whole jumping into a detoxification lifestyle um that it's it's something that it's still relatively new and for someone like yourself 16 years of practicing and brother air is about <laughs> almost i mean he's getting close to that 40 year mark he's not quite not quite there yet i think he's 37 years practicing the diet yeah, that and and that's 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 so impressive because our society today has drastically declined and has fallen to a position where you know children are now being born with all these chronic conditions uh, you know we we work with a lot of kids so we're seeing kids 10 11 12 obese already having asthma problems eye problems that are are just unhealthy and it's very disheartening to know that our society is ultimately the background to all of this and what they promote what they advertise how they construct our reality is it's destroying us or it's assisting us to destroy ourselves basically is how that's how i view that yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we, we just celebrated uh, what we like to call death culture day here in the States a couple of days ago. Uh, I mean, think about that. I mean, that's what blows my mind when I really start to look through the mucus free filter. You start to realize how everything in a society is based on death. I mean, just this is a death culture. And in the middle of the word death, you have E-A-T, you have eat. And so it's it's in code right there. It's telling you what this whole thing is about. And because instead of having a holiday where everybody dresses up like fruitarians and acts, you know, as if they're, uh, you know, immortals or, you know, and, and that that don't kill people and stuff. It's, you know, we dress up like like ghosts and goblins and dead things and murderous people and 
blood stuff and and all this kind of thing and and i and and i'm saying talking about it from someone who was in it and 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 is bearing witness to it you know so i'm not criticizing in the sense of like oh don't it's not good to act be dead you know i'm just saying nick like, i was there and i had fun when i was growing up dressing up like a like putting white makeup on and dressing up like a um uh Dr dracula or whatever it was and roger rabbit and the mask and all, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff you know so it's 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 not that type of thing it's just let's take a look at the society let's take a look at how insane this really is when you look at it from another perspective and you you kind of get outside of your orientation and you say well wait a minute does this really make sense for me to dress my child up like a zombie like is that really like what makes that fun why is that fun well we're oriented for that to be fun you know because this is a death culture it gets goes hand in hand with with how we're living you know yeah and, and <laughs> i know that when, when you start to talk about the system and how it changes your reality <laughs> we can talk for days about what's happening in our world and that's right i mean i, I want to get into that definitely i do um let, let's 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 go back though real quick to let's go back to the body because i know that a lot of individuals um they're, they're not going to be able to experience this and this is something that i try to emphasize you're not going to be able to experience a change in your emotions and in your beingness and your physical body without first doing what's necessary to eliminate what has been accumulated our whole entire lives of living and eating incorrectly. I think I'm getting a phone call. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, and so it, it has to come back to the system because when you start to practice the system and you start to eliminate you get a sense of clarity where you, you're, you're opening these channels of, of, of things within yourself that are, are, you can say they're blocked by these obstructions that are inside of our bodies. So being that that's, you've been 16 years into the system, you know, coming from only a couple years, I, I, I've seen the drastic change in my individual self, but, to think like, hey, this is what's it, what's going to be like in three years and five years and 10 years. Now we're getting to the 10 and to the 15 and all the way up to 36 years with Brother Air. That's that's amazing. So I, I want to just get your thoughts on your rege your regeneration of your body, your 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 mind, your emotions. You're like, give us an example of what it has been like to go through the system for this long and the changes that you experience. Yeah, yeah, that is uh, it's been a, a hell of a journey. I mean, just you know, and, and there's is there's times it's very hard, there's times it's scary, but there's also times where it's you just feel you, you could don't feel like you could feel any better. And uh, so I never like to try to tell people that they're like, "Oh, this is, you know, butterflies and it's all great and it's all going to be real easy and fun and just be natural and you're like nah this is this is serious hard work this is work for you know serious revolutionary serious practitioners pioneers that are ready to really not only transform themselves but when you start to transform yourself you transform your reality you transform uh the people around you you know the way that people react and talk to you and you're not trying to change them. you know you're not trying to do that but it happens people talk to you different uh people because they they feel you feel different to them at at a certain point you know if you feel sense. totally different and so uh for me i i noticed when i started practicing i was just became a hardcore student of the mucusless diet healing system i wasn't studying a lot of other modalities or other authors you know i wasn't you know kind of what a lot of people do now because i think the internet and just the way that things are structured is 
They're studying so many different people and yeah. trying to take a little bit of information from everybody and create their own thing. And yeah. I'm finding that that's, that's problematic for people because there's oftentimes there's things that are incompatible, you know, especially with, you know, with you know, Professor Arnold Eric Mucus Diet Healing System. There's things that are incompatible with, uh, you know, we've got a lot of people that get interested in the Mucus Diet that follow, you know, like Dr. Sabi. Uh, there's some yeah. incompatibilities there, you know, Dr. Morris, Di uh, Gabriel Cousins, whoever, you know, there's there's incompatibilities. Uh, and it's not to say that uh, there's not things uh, outside the mucus diet to study what i usually recommend is whatever you're going to devote your time to and it really delve into it to see if it is what it is and that's what i did with the mucus diet and oftentimes when people say the mucus diet doesn't work uh it i notice that there these are folks that have been as uh, as brother air would say dibbing and dabbing <laughs> with <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, with a lot of different modalities and a lot of different opinions and information that and, and trying to fit it all together, you know, trying to have it all fit. And uh, and I just that's that's just so problematic. So I feel blessed to have been able to start the mucus diet kind of before inter I mean, Internet was around, but there wasn't sites of people talking about raw foodism and detoxification and, and air it or nothing. You know, there was one website yeah. that had uh, a little bit of information with about Arnold Errett and, and, and a group uh, uh, that, that not a lot of people were involved on, you know, and so I didn't have a whole lot of distractions. So I was able to focus on Mugus's diet. But, but what I did is when you read through the book, you can start to, you can kind of research the people that Eric was talking about in the books and the resources that he was talking about. So he talks about Hayward Carrington in, uh, in his book. Uh, and he talks about, uh, uh, you know, just various, just various people and authors and figures. And it's interesting to then go, whether he was saying positive or negative things about their methods or their thoughts, it's interesting to go and research and say, OK, what what was Eric looking at? What was he really talking about? And I see with with the average reader of the mucus diet healing system, especially before the annotated version, is they just skip over all of that. All of those, you know, those different parts, you know, talking about um, uh, Thomas Powell, you know, Eric talks about Thomas Powell. You know, I got copies of of Powell's book, you know, Fundamentals of Health and Disease that Eric references and talks about. Uh, it's very hard today to find a copy of that <laughs> because there's, you know, they're, they're way out of date and, uh, uh, or not out of date, but just out, out of print for, for decades. Um, so, so that was for me, uh, an important part, having a foundation. Uh, I was also lucky enough to be living in Cincinnati when, and I had access to brother air and others <laughs> that made up a local community of folks that practice in the mucus diet. And so obviously that, that gave me a, <laughs> you know, quite a leg up and, and, and really seeing how this thing is supposed to function and work in a real way. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, I'm sure just that, that with their presence alone has definitely assisted because which well, I'm 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 well I'm well sure you're aware of that when you begin this journey, typically it's not going to be around hundreds and thousands of people that are also in this journey, and so that isolation that occurs, it does it does have its effect for sure. And this is another reason why I wanted to speak with, with, with yourself about the system was because where I'm from, in my area of the world, we don't have many individuals that are even vegans. Mm. <laughs> so you, and when I say that, I mean, in, in a populated town of 10,000, you could probably find maybe 20 mm. people. So this awareness due to, again, the programming of our society, that awareness is not available here. 
Mm -hmm. And so when you have an individual who's going through the system and is going through changes physically and as, as a person within you're, you're going to have some uh, obstacles, I guess we could just describe it as where people are not going to be feeling what you're trying to uh, express or, or, or explain. And for whatever reason, fear, fear based, I'm going to stick with in my own mind about that. But there's not a lot of assistance with giving out the message. So being able to talk with you today is going to open up those doors to say that, hey, there are people outside of this that are practicing something that is, in my opinion, valuable for every person in the world because health is something that we all have. And if we neglect that, it will take life from us. And that's not just physically. I mean, that goes on so many levels. And being able to just help deliver this message overall about assisting yourself to healing your body, to changing who you are as a person. All those things are of such great value. So, you know, with that, with that being said, I, I really would like to get your take on this message. How, how, do you, how, do you, how do you give this message to people without coming off too aggressive or too standoffish? How, how, would you, how would you answer that question? Yeah, so, you know, growing up, I used to be a, uh, when, I, when I was in the Boy Scouts uh, uh, years and years ago when I was young, if I wanted to go on the trips, I had to sell, uh, we sold mulch. So I used to go door to door. I'm like 11 and 12 years old, 13 years old. And I'm going door to door, knocking in them little, little cute, little chubby little guy, I guess, as they, as they say. And I would be like, hi, this is, you know, with the Boy Scouts of America and blah, blah, blah. And, um, and I learned how to really kind of communicate and to sell an idea. And, uh, and, and where it's just kind of just like, just persuasion of how, how do you, uh, share an idea and like you said not not be pushy not basically kind of get get people to be interested in what you have to say and what i find is the uh, uh the the mystery is something that draws people in because if if you show up and you're just sort of uh uh, uh reciting like okay this is an, and vegans do this and the raw foodists do this and it's like no wonder nobody wants to <laughs> wants to do that you know where they're confronted with with you and, and and you're like you you're killing animals you're doing this and you know you know it's like it's like okay but you gotta <laughs> you gotta have some kind of tact and have some tactics or something that like to communicate to people and so uh what i find is it, it depends on the situation depends on the people that i'm around or what you know if i'm kind of dealing with somebody that's coming from a standard American diet, which I'm good at. Like I actually, I'm more comfortable sharing the mucus's diet sometimes with people that know nothing about it. Not, you know, they're not vegan. They're not raw foodists or nothing. Uh, then sometimes with vegans, cause vegans can be tough to people that are already vegan to try to introduce them to the mucus's diet healing system can be, can be a little tough because they already kind of think that they're, what they're doing is the highest level yeah of thing food chain type. Yeah. yeah so when you're like well look here's here's a way to kick it up a notch they uh they, they can get kind of combative but uh what i like to do is uh well first and foremost i i, I will let them bring it up and ask, start asking the questions because all it usually takes for me is not everybody had the kind of transformation i had but the the easy opener for me is just basically like, you know, yeah, I used to be 300 pounds and I used to suffer from a lot of illnesses and I just changed my diet and, and you know, and it, and it fixed a lot. I'll leave it there. I don't lead. See, most people would lead with, hey, did you know that I lost 100 pounds? Check out my picture. You know, like I just I, I let them ask me the questions after I drop hmm. that bomb. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I used to suffer from all kinds of ailments and 
lost a bunch of weight and stuff. And, you know, and then I act like we're just going to go on with to some, talking about something else. They usually back me up like, well, hold on. What, what was that? You, you lost how yeah. much pound? And I'm like, well, yeah, you, you want to see a picture? And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, I might show them the, the before and after picture. And then now I have their attention. Now they're, <laughs> you know, they're like, what is going on? You know, this is, let me check this out. And, um, and then I also, I've learned to not try and share too much of the details of the diet uh, in these kind of interactions because it's, you know, you're, you'll, you'll either lose people or people will start trying to defend different things that they don't, they, they don't understand because they haven't read the book yet or really been mm. really exposed. So my goal is basically to, to using a little bit of mystery and a little bit of, you know, kind of like, you know, just give, give them a reveal a little bit in, and get them interested to at least read the book. And, uh, uh, and then I've also learned that they, that they're more likely to read the book if they, uh, if they purchase it. Cause we used to give away like, literally thousands of books, um, I mean, before I came out with the annotated version, uh, I mean, we would nearly me and saying me and brother air and others in the community. I mean, sometimes we would just be walking around the streets, almost handing books out. I mean, we just wanted this information to get out there. And, uh, but I learned that people take it seriously when they have to, even if it's just $5 or something, you know, when they invest in it. Uh, and you know, and, and, and since they would sp spend hundreds of dollars to go to, a, a doctor that that might not be able to help at all uh and then here's a you know 15 dollar book that you follow the the principles and you know, we got you know, people healing from all kinds of things um you know i think that's a that's a pretty fair fair investment but you also have to invest your time uh mm -hmm. and your energy and reading and that is um and, and that becomes the next well then the next hurdle was people would say well i don't, I don't like to read well, we've also solved that problem because now we have the audio book available. And so my personal goal had basically been to get rid of all of those those type of hurdles to where it's like, look, here's the information is available and you can listen to it. You can watch it. There's a, hundreds of videos now on YouTube where we're talking about things in detail, you know, so there's no excuse in terms of the, the getting the information part, which used to be tough you know to really get the information now information is available uh now we just need people to really really take a look at it and and then start to practice and so that's what i try to try to get people to do but uh but yeah it's just a matter of you know getting people another thing i learned too is that sometimes you'll you'll introduce somebody the the diet to somebody today and they might be really kind of really vocally against it to like, Oh man, that's mm. crazy. And uh, no, nah, that's nuts. And then a year later, they will be somebody that's the most ardent practitioner. They'll be like, <laughs> call you up like, like, Hey, what was that? You was, how you do the minimums? You was talking about her, you know, <laughs> they call you. And they're, they're like, uh, the doctor said, I got, I got bronchitis. And I can't really breathe, man. What is there anything that I could do besides taking it, you know, doing whatever, whatever they told you to do. And so, this this works like that. Sometimes I'm I'm willing to wait for somebody to go through an elimination or what they would call sick, uh, because I try to plant in, in some seeds to where once they start blowing their nose and coughing up mucus, you're gonna remember my face. You know, <laughs> like you you know you might forget me right now, but all of a sudden you're gonna be one day you're gonna be coughing and you're gonna be like, uh oh, what was that? that mucus thing what <laughs> you know and then it's gonna make a little bit more sense and um and and i get sad when i see you know and that's why i want people to have the information is because when when the going does get rough you'll be able to 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 use this information to heal like quickly because uh when you know i i just i'm appalled every time i go to you know hospital or nursing home or something like that and oh, i see man. The food that they're serving and just the whole psychology behind how they approach, uh, you know, the, the drug use and all, all that kind of stuff. It's just like, man, you, so, uh, there's so much of this that is totally unnecessary, and just in, in making the sickness just last longer, longer, longer. And um, 
So uh, yeah, so that's so that's my thing. I mean, there there's more to it, and that's something that I want to start doing more again. Is when we have these live meetups, we can actually like role play, and uh, that's always kind of fun. Where we uh, act like you know somebody that's never heard of the diet, and we kind of go over how to uh, kind of how to talk to people and uh, and, and get to, to get them interested in in the diet. And, um, you know, but for, first and foremost, we you, you have to, you know, get into it yourself, get yourself deep into the practice, Definitely. be studying. And then uh, it's it'll it'll be easier, a lot easier to, to articulate things to people. Yeah. And, you know, just just to comment on that, because w what you said about just bring bring something to them that is not necessarily the whole information of in detail just something small and this is where we what we do with our clients and with our members and people that follow us and know of us is we say break your fast with fruit and well what does that mean well e mm. every night when you go to sleep and you wake up you're breaking a fast mm -hmm. and when you when you eat consume fruit as your first meal so what my brother and myself who I'll get into my brother in, in just in just a minute, but what we what we teach is is break your fast with fruit and see how your body will begin to change, and that alone right there has opened doors to people wanting to add more fruit to their diet and more vegetables to their diet, and at the same time, of course, if you're coming from a standard American diet, you're going to start to eventually experience these uh, symptoms right. and w when a person is like, Hey man, I, I, I had a, I had a pear last night and man, I got bad acid reflex or, or I, I, I had an orange and, and I, I was in the restroom for 30 minutes. So little things like that will turn those light bulbs on to say, right. well, what's, what's next? Like what, what else is there to this? But um, yeah, so I want to, express my gratitude again with this because there are going to be uh, a, a great amount of people that will be able to watch this and learn something from it regardless of where you're at on, on your own individual journey again we are not about pushing something we're not pushing supplements we're not pushing drastic changes we're we're simply trying to express that there is a system created that when you understand it, you can heal your body and you can heal who you are as a person as well. And you can escape from this reality crap hole that we live in that is created off of us being filled with obstructions and destroying ourselves to be obedient zombies and, and, and buy this, consume this and live like this and die like this. Like it's ridiculous. And we're just trying to just awaken people Cause this, it's, this is, this journey is not for everyone. And you, uh, I love when you had said that, that when a person's going to go through something, they're going to think of my face when, <laughs> when, when they're struggling, right. because right. that, that is, you know, we, we're trying to give this message and not everybody has removed enough karma to receive the message, I guess is a kind of correct way to say it where, Sometimes you, you got to suffer or you got to endure a little bit more struggles to really need that shift within yourself to, to improve or to fix things. So, yeah, yeah, so this is, um, yeah, this is, this is great so far. And, and I want to, I want to just touch on something that, that I know is very popular because of the fact that the people that are suffering or that find the system or hear of Dr. Morris and start going into his work is that the kids are what's coming up next. And when we start as parents start to go through the shift, how do we incorporate that into a system created world that is 
I mean, people are being demonized for making their kids even go vegan, you know, let alone the struggles of saying, hey, well, let's let's remove all of these mucus forming foods, which is everything basically. And like, this is where that transition part comes in, but there's still that, that, that big gap when it comes to children and the mucus's diet and, and getting out of a standard American diet or a, a diet of self-destruction, whatever you want to look at that as, but how do we deal with that with, with kids and the, the transitioning families as I kind of would, would, would describe it. Do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah. So, it was, uh, you know, it's interesting. I had, <clears throat> um, uh, w- uh, working with, uh, uh, some, some team members, mucus free life team members, and we're putting a, a list of, of mucus free tips and tricks together. And, uh, and there was a couple, couple of them that were on, uh, children. In fact, I, I just looked it up because I was going to say, well, maybe I'll, I'll read this. Um, uh, because there's, we got several of mucus as children. When it comes to raising mucus as children, remember that you are your child's best example. Focus on keeping yourself on track and then be sure you are instilling the values in your children that you find important and hope they are paying attention. So first and foremost, you have to be into this diet and lifestyle and be a practitioner of it, be a student of it. And as you start to transform, uh, you, you will, one, you'll be more intuitive in terms of what kinds of things to feed your children. And, uh, and you can, you know, start to feel as if you don't have, because what I've seen, I've seen some, seen interesting things. I've seen some parents that want to put their child on the mucus diet, but they don't want to practice it. And I'm, and I've told them, I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea because you you gotta you're not gonna know what to do with the, and, and and what yeah. you know when when what's too aggressive what's not aggressive enough um, you can use your physiology as uh, somewhat of a barometer to understand uh, uh, that of your children because they they're car they're coming out of you and you know they got your uh, some of your blood in there and so um, uh, so that's so it's first and foremost in my opinion that's that's the key is you, you have to be a, a student and a practitioner yourself and the, uh, 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 the, your transformation is going to enrich everybody around you, including, including your family. You know, another thing I've noticed is some parents, they, because they're, they're not far enough along, they get caught up in the, the orientation of, well, I want my kids to experience, the same things that other kids experience. And so, you know, well, I want them to go out on Halloween and eat candy and, you know, and and that kind of stuff. And so they'll be, they'll eat well for a while, but here, but all of a sudden Christmas comes around or, or a a birthday or something. And here's like birthday cake is like, well, wait a minute. You were pretty much mucus free or having a lot of mucus, mucus free meals and then we're going to have just a regular cake or something, <laughs> you know, there's nothing, yeah. you know, you could make some baked banana surprise or something. You could put a candle in that. But, um, so mm. it's, yeah, it's, but that's part of, you're not going to think like that until you take yourself far enough. And so if that's part of your inspiration is to be able to, help because you got first and foremost you got to do this path for yourself you can't do it for somebody else you can't see like a significant other that that you're that's doing it and then you're like i want to impress them so i'm gonna do it because of them you can't can't do that you got to do this for yourself but once you're locked in then secondarily it makes sense to then think about your loved ones and your family and understand that you're going to put yourself in a position to be here for them uh, mm-hmm. for longer, you know, as brother air likes to say, he, he would rather, he's doing the diet for himself, but in the long run, he wants to be able to be there for his loved ones and his family, as opposed to, you know, put, putting a bunch of time and effort into, you know, be becoming wealthy, but you're sickly, you know, and you can't mm-hmm. function because you didn't put enough energy and time into your health. You put it into, you know, trying, trying to make this, this whole wealth thing. 
and then um, you that you know, end up passing away young and you passed off a lot of you know a lot of money to your family maybe but um but wouldn't they rather have you there even if y'all were didn't have a whole lot of money you know hope you know the, the <laughs> hopefully uh the, yeah. the more i know i'd rather have my family members than you know any kind of money thing you know and so so that's so that's key there was a, another one of these tips and tricks the legal issues surrounding plant-based children uh, some countries and local jurisdictions have laws that make it unlawful to feed children a plant-based diet uh, know the laws in your area if you are especially concerned contact a lawyer so you know where you stand uh, should a legal conflict arise and so that's something that i know there's some places I, I keep reading about italy where i don't know if it ever passed uh, I hope it didn't, but I know they were they were trying to pass some laws where you could go go to jail for a year if you if you were giving your child, uh, uh, from what I read, give the legislation was proposing you know if you were caught giving your child a plant based diet, you could not only have children taken away, but you're going to jail for a year. Wow. So the negative forces are are abound. You know they're they're definitely out there. And we just have to be conscious. Uh, uh, we got to study, uh, and we also, when you when we look at history, it's part of the orientation sometimes of society is to, especially depending on what your socioeconomic situation is, is to make you feel like you can't go nowhere. You know, you can't. You're stuck here. You got to stay in this city. You got to, you know, you got to make this work. Um, uh, you know, I know my ancestors, uh, were the poorest of the poor people in this country, but in the 1800s and tens of thousands, hundreds of them, maybe millions, uh, 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 walked in some cases or found ways to migrate, uh, thousands of miles from where they were. They took the clothes on their back. They grabbed the children uh, that that was there, and 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 they and they started. They migrated. They left because it was that important. That's an attitude that I don't see a lot of people have because we're we're a little too domesticated. Uh, yeah, we're a little definitely. bit too kept. And so to start thinking like that, to start thinking, well, maybe it's time to not 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 that you have to do it tomorrow, but let's let's make a plan because I guarantee I got a plan of uh to to get to some place you know I'm, it's tropical is there's going to be a tropical situation but at the same time I'm, I'm transitioning to that i'm not gonna do something abruptly because there's the 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 opposite side of that is i see sometimes people that aren't far enough along and don't have any kind of plan kind of get the uh you know get the gumption to just like okay we're moving to a an all fruit commune you know and it's like okay this ain't gonna work because you <laughs> you're not you know far enough along and you didn't really get your money piece together and all that kind of stuff so but these are things to think about this is the direction that we start to think and we start to take action to uh, uh to make sure that we can put ourselves in a situation where we are um where we have control uh, of our own destiny and we're not looking over o over our shoulders worrying about is somebody going to call some kind of authorities on me cuz I'm doing an enema or I gave my child a little enema or something you know we we don't need that and so so these are definitely things that uh that that we can that especially as we come together as a community we'll we'll also strengthen uh strengthen that and uh, this final one, disagreements about how to feed the children. When you and your spouse disagree on how to feed the children, the best thing to do is to keep uh, keep relating. Uh, you are in a relationship and the diet sometimes has a way of breaking the relating part of it. Uh, you need to keep the line of communication open and continue uh, having those tough conversations. Also, always remember where your boundaries are and stick to them. And so that's that's an issue that's that comes up for a number of people where you're in, in a marriage or in a really close relationship and the mucus diet comes into your life and you need the diet because you might mm -hmm. be going through something. And so you can't like it's not just like a fun like like a o Oprah's Do Dr. Oz diet. <laughs> or something. It's like this life and death and you need this information. You need to go down this path. But you're with a spouse that 
doesn't understand what's happening and it doesn't agree with it and just says, look, this is this sounds crazy. You just need to go deal with your doctors and blah, blah, blah. And so so and then on top of that, sometimes there's, there's children involved. And so this is this is a real issue. And I don't have any magic kind of advice that's going to say like, oh, it's going to be all right. You know, it's it, it is a, it's, it's a tough piece, but you have to. Uh, keep the lines of communication open and try and as you get, as you go down the mucus free path to uh, uh, as much as they will allow you to share uh, the information with them and at least give them a heads up on some of the things that you might go through during your transformation. Uh, you know, that that's an important, important piece. And, uh, and then with the children that, that can, that, that, that can be tough, but the, the hope is that as you transform yourself uh, and you start to improve your children's diet a, as you can, even if you don't have full control to change it yeah. all, uh, you know, any, anything moving in the right direction is better than nothing moving in the right direction. Definitely. So don't, don't be hard on yourself about that. Okay. And my, my youngest is four. His name is Jarek. Mm. He he loved the 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 mucus monster video, and he he he'll always he'll always bring it up when we're talking about like eating bad foods or whatnot. He's like, the mucus mm. monster will come in. There. So <laughs> it's really uh, yeah that that video. I would recommend it if you want to check it out. You can go on Professor Spira's YouTube channel and check it out. It's really, uh, it's fun. It's, it has a lot of information that's going to assist with coming, coming on board to the transitioning, transitioning lifestyle to becoming healthier. You know, that's again, what it all comes back around to is we want you to be healthy, regardless of your background or what you do in life or what you're trying to accomplish in life. We need our health. And this approach is, I mean, I, I'm going to say it's, it's, it's the most logical one. You know, you, you look at the system as a whole, you're truly going to get, you, you're going to get what you put into it. There's, there's no doubting that. And coming from a position of, like you mentioned, the people sometimes are brought to this because of pain, because of suffering, and you have to do this. And for others, you don't want to, you don't want to wait till you get there to want to make the change then, especially with how bad our world is currently mm. with, you know, there's so many factors that are coming back to that self-destruction where we're, we're, we're living in an environment that that's all that, is occurring from the outside and we have to go within and change from the inside, clear out those channels for that, you know, divinity of, of, of God, whatever you want to consider, we, we got to create, create those channels of communication and getting back to nature and living a more um, abundant life with, seeking self-fulfillment rather than outside fulfillment you know those 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 go hand in hand and practicing the system when you understand the principles you can make it a lifestyle change you mm -hmm. can make it uh suitable for families you can you can do things that that you understand you understand eliminations you're looking forward to cleaning your body out and the next topic i wanted to jump on was with of course the enemas because there is a lot of confusion and i i believe it's because there's not a lot of information available on it where you don't have somebody outside of brother aaron maybe Takora, um that are 20 30 plus years of doing enemas and the confusion that lies with enemas and, and why to do them. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's a, it's a part of, it's a part of this. And when you understand 
cleaning your colon out and cleaning your intestinal tract out, why it's needed and what it does for the body, then you start to make sense of it in, in your mind. And, and I want to just get your thoughts on, on that because I know that's a big part of the system. And I know you like to talk about it. So <laughs> enlighten us. Yeah. So well, first and foremost, yeah, the, the, what's, what's tough about that is people are always – yeah, you know, they get touchy about like, what what am I supposed to do? You know, put some, but, uh, and then they'll say, well, that's unnatural. Why would you, you know, th that's usually the main thing. Well, why would you, if you're talking all this natural, why would that be? And, uh, and so, the, you know, first and foremost, it's like, okay, well, f let's put this into perspective. So we, we have years and decades and generations of, of eating wrong foods, you know, eating foods that, that over time uh, destroy the, the body and the bloodline. Now, the, it, the, the, what makes this argument hard or the, to, to observe this is because then people start bringing up people that are like in their 90s or 100 years old, like, well, so-and-so did such and such, and they lived to be however long, and, you know, George Burns smoked and did you know, and all, you became 100, whatever. And, and it's just these really, you know, these kind of, the, you know, these lo logical fallacies of like, well, this one person did such and such. And this one person, you know, uh, did this other thing or so-and-so ate meat their whole life. My great grandma, you know, it's like, look, man, this, this is about a transformation uh, and doing what is, what is right. You know, getting back in line, because I guarantee that physiologically speaking, you can't eat as, as poorly as your predecessors and hope to live as long as they did because mm -hmm. we're getting weaker physiologically look at the you know look at the data well then somebody will say well no statistically people are living longer than they ever have well how first of all how do you know where is that data coming from because when people start talking like that we that we know these are going to be very eurocentric type of discussions where they're usually looking at data of people that died in their 30s and 20s that were, you know, in the, the dark ages, uh, dark ages of Europe. Uh, we don't have enough data on the links of life of people in other places. Well, and there is data on. It. I mean, there's you, even if you go to Asia with the China study and there's all that. But mm -hmm. I'm interested in, in an Africa study that really studies. It goes back far enough to study. Uh, the plant-based eras, you know, pat, way back. I mean, we're talking about times that would be ancient to what we consider ancient Egypt back, you know, Ethiopia, you, you go, go all the way back. Uh, that, that would be a little more interesting to understand, you know, where, where we're coming from. Uh, because ultimately what happens as I understand it is when you have all this uneliminated waste, it your body is going to try to find a way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And so whatever it, it's, it, it can, it just becomes part of you. It's going to end up absorbing into your tissue system and, and just be you and, Correct. and just become this toxic mass of, you know, as Eric said, you know, walking cesspool, uh, you know, walking cesspools of, of, of filth. And, uh, and, and so when you put all of that in that, so you could, you could either do something, you know, there's certain surgeries that are normalized. Now there's people that are having their, their intestines cut out and say, okay, well, let me get a gastric bypass surgery or let me do that. all of these, these very invasive methods of cutting into you. That's considered okay. You know, that's that's routine it's normalized surgery. Exactly. It's normalized. A little bit of warm water and lemon juice <laughs> shot up your colon. And, and that so you would rather be cut on. You would rather like just like think about that. Like, cause don't think about it in terms of you being sedated and put to sleep and then they're cutting on you. Think about if you weren't put to sleep. And then they, they cut a hole through your chest right here or through your, you know, the different places in your stomach, your leg or something. And, and you think that 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 that's normal, that that's that that's OK to do. But 
putting a little bit of water just to, to irrigate the colon, loosen this stuff up, uh, you know, get get this stuff out of there. That that's what's crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's yeah, it's it's insane. And I'm not. Let's see. Looks like a little thing here. Hold on a second. See, uh, so what we're watching, uh, I guess I'm, I'm gonna have to find out what this beep is. <laughs> I think this is, uh, I got a battery thing. I'll, I'll let you keep talking. I was just watching, I turned on the uh, this colonoscopy video, yeah, yeah, we see, and, uh, we see that on the screen right now, yeah, okay, yeah. Just look, 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 when you understand what our body and how our body digests, you realize that. It's waste. It's waste matter. You, there is no piping system in the world that is not going to, at some point, accumulate waste matter of this magnitude going through the tissue system and not, not getting stuck, not, not becoming obstructed, not being a breeding ground for all these colonies of different types of parasites and worms. So a little warm water, some lemon, to clean out the colon, to clean out your intestinal tract, like that is, it's, it's not, it shouldn't be looked as something that is not or shouldn't be normalized. And again, coming back to our, our information on health, it's suppressed. People don't want to tell you that changing your diet can make you healthy because then there wouldn't be any consumers anymore. So did you manage to get the correct video? or another video that just gives you a example of what what's inside of us. Like this is, this is not, it's not just one random person. This is, this is what we have in all of us. 